to that, I have nothing to add. <laughs> I was always trying to appease God because I couldn't try to appease You'll try to do something. In fact, the scripture says that if your conscience bothers you, you will always, your operating system will always go to some sort of work to appease the God that's wrathful at you. As if you could do something good enough and be a good trooper. Okay, good. I'll lighten up on you. You did good this week. See. Now, I'm talking about prosperity here. It's going to come out in a minute. You're going to see. Hmm. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the Gentile? Yes, the God of the Gentiles too. See, we were taught that you were, he was the God of the Jews or the God of people that did right, but he was not the God of the ugly people. He was the God of the good, but not the God of the bad. See, the Jew was the one that walked in the covenant of God according to the Old Covenant. The Gentile was the one that had no establishment of to do right, wrong, or indifferent. Seeing it as one God which shall justify the circumcision, that's the Jew, by faith, and the uncircumcision through faith, that's the one that's non-Jew, do we then make void the law through faith? No, God forbid. We establish the law. What shall we say then that Abraham our father is pertaining to the flesh is found? If Abraham had been justified by works, he'd have whereof glory, but not before God. Well, what does the scripture say? It says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Wow. Now, to him that works is the reward of righteousness. He's talking about here, the reward of righteousness to him that works is not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not. Can you believe that's written in the Bible? <laughs> to him that worketh not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputes righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Verse 8 is a powerful verse of Scripture. In fact, it's so powerful. Y'all know Neil Perry? Remember Neil Perry went to church with us? He built that back wall. He's the one that built this uh, judges paneling for me. It's interesting I preach grace in a, in, in a backdrop that appears to be the law of judgment. Maybe we're, we're reestablishing what this is supposed to look like. Neil did this carpentry work for me. He built a set of steps for my cabin, and I bought him a crosscut saw. He wanted a big crosscut saw. Did you paint his crosscut saw? Were you the one that did it? Maybe you didn't. Okay. He has this crosscut saw that I bought and gave to him. He, he did some work for me, and I gave that to him. And he hung it over this big opening in his log cabin and painted that crosscut saw with a backdrop and wrote, Romans 4, 8 on it. it says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. <laughs> and that is in the man's house. Comes this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? Does the Jew only, only ones that get it? Or upon the uncircumcision also? You mean, this blessedness can come to people that have worked for it, can't they? What about the people that don't work for it? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? How was the faith reckoned to Abraham for righteousness? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, being yet uncircumcised that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had, being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world, was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but the promise that he should be the heir of the world was to Abraham and to his seed through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, then faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. 
because the law works wrath. The law works wrath. Somebody say, the law works wrath. Well, where no law is, there's no transgression. You see, I'm going to walk on the edge of religious persecution when I say this. A few years ago, they had a big concrete, not concrete, it was a single stone. I think the thing weighed three tons in a courthouse in Alabama. And it had engraved the Ten Commandments. And through the ACLU and other, nothing American, nothing civil, nothing liberated, they're a union, that's it. They managed to get that taken out. And the Christians all pitched fit. They picked it, how they got in that building and got a forklift in there and got that thing up and got that thing call, hauled out of the building, I don't know. They, but they, they showed it on the news how they're hauling it out. And I was watching it. And I right at first, I got incensed too because I thought, there, are they doing away with the things of God in the court systems of America? I said, God, what are they doing? And you know what the word of the Lord was to me? He said, I took those things away long ago and nailed them to his cross. Glory to God. Glory to God. I thought, where have I been? He blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us and took them out of the way. All they were doing was taking them out of the way. He said, I took them away years ago. And I said something about that and whoo, <laughs> set my rear end on fire, a bunch of folk did. You preach heresy. Verse 16. Therefore, <laughs> it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the ultimate end result, that the promise would be sure to all the seed, wow. not to that which is just of the law. If it, was, if, if, if it wasn't by faith that it might be by, by grace, that the promise would only be sure to those that were under the law. But so he, to, to make sure that this righteousness got to everybody, he did it by faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise would be sure to everybody. Wow. Not to that which is also of the law, but that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. See, not just a few little nations that did right. Made you a father of many nations. Before him, like unto him whom he believed. Even God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Now when he called things which be not as though they were, he went straight to people that did not know him and called them his very own children. So that they that did not know Him, there they should, shall be called the children of the living God. He could call things which be not as though they were. He's unwilling that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repent of what? I'm going to tell you in a minute. If I don't remember, you remind me. Repent of what, Pastor John? Okay. Who against hope believed in hope that He might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, and that which was spoken was, so shall thy seed be. What? So what shall thy seed be? He took him out and showed him the stars. He said, if you're able to count them, that's what your seed will be. Took him out to the seashore and said, can you? I was out on the beach this past week. Thank you all for letting us go to Panama City and yeah. Tampa. We went down to Florida right while the storm was coming in, and we had the expressway to ourselves. Wow, that's the best time to go. Son. <laughs> I thought, no, they, yeah, a few were coming out of the other direction they were coming. We were just whizzing down, and you could, I could almost see people in the, in the, in the, looking at us from the other side of the expressway. Where are y'all going? You know, we're going down. Didn't even get a drop of rain on us. Thank you, Lord. I think every Christian in, in Daytona was speaking to that storm, don't you? It just had it, they had it out there spinning. It wouldn't even come in. That storm knew better than to come in. Because they were saying, peace, be still. Call those things that be not as though they were. Isn't that what you told us to do in your exhortation? Okay. We're on the beach. Oh, that's right. 
And I, I, I got a little bit of sand on one of my feet, and I said, look at that. If I just had, if I just had that many kids... And I was looking at all those grains of sand as far as you could see up and down both sides. I thought, that's Abraham's seed. He, I said, this is Abraham's seed. Look at Abraham's seed. Send, you got your phone? Send that, that video to Lance. Get him to, I want you to see. I started preaching to a congregation, started feeding a congregation. Yeah, I did, right out there on the beach, feeding a congregation. It's all, let me tell you something. If you've got something to feed somebody, hungry folks will show up. That's right. That's the way that works. <laughs> so shall your seed be. He said, if you go out and look at the grains of sand on the beach, if you're able to number them, so shall your seed be. Wow. And that was a man who was 100 years old and it ceased to be with him after the manner of men. So the first thing he called that was not, as though it was, was something I can't re repeat in a pulpit. <laughs> you ever thought about that? Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he's about 100 years old. Neither yet the deadness of his wife's womb. She was 90. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Therefore, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, righteousness being imputed to him. But for us also, to whom righteousness shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who delivered, was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. Therefore, 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 you know why you write therefore? What is therefore in, in English? What is it, you English teachers? It's called a conjunction. It means it is about to conjoin what we're about to say to what we previously said, right? Therefore, because of what we just said, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulations work patience. Patience, experience, experience, hope. And hope makes not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Hold your place right there in verse 6. And look over when it says here, Verse 19, it says, Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Then it says here in verse 6 of the next chapter, When we were yet without strength. See, he had weakness in his body, but strength in his faith. See? And his strength in his faith strengthened his body. You see? Y'all look, look, look at me with a different tone of voice. When we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us. I'll, I'll do that here in just a minute. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly, died for us. I got to say this now. Back a few minutes ago when I was saying that they took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. He just spoke to me while I was talking and said, now go back and reiterate that and let them know it was even the law contained in commandments and in ordinances. Go back to that. See, what he took out of the way and nailed to his cross was the law contained in commandments and ordinances and took that out of the way. I'm not saying you don't do commandments. I'm saying the carnal commandment in and of itself has no power. The law of love gives you the power. And you can't access except that by, except by faith. So we've got to come to Jesus before we have any strength at all. Now, I think I'm a little better with that. He may say something else to me in a minute. I don't think I really finished it. 
But God commended His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Much more then, much more then, much more, much more, much more then. Being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more, much more, much more, much more, being reconciled, we'll be saved by His life. Isn't He alive? And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we've now received the atonement. Underline that word atonement, and you've got room right there. And write the word remission, which means it's been paid for. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin's not imputed where there's no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. And not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through, for if through the offense of one man, talking about Adam, many be dead, much more. The grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. He's talking about Adam. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Righteousness is a gift, it's not earned. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to, just, to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. He just keeps reiterating this. Verse 19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. I don't see how that's fair, Pastor. Well, the sin that I was, was imputed on me without me even knowing I was born into it was, wasn't fair, was it? Well, good. I'll take the unfair righteousness if it's a gift, won't you? Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Someone said to me one time, I heard this guy preaching on, on television. He said, God installed the law to curb sin until he could get Jesus in the earth. And I thought, did he? To kind of keep people straight until you get Jesus here? No. The law was installed to put a magnifying glass over sin, to make it gigantic right. and make it so big you, just, you right. stick it up your nose where you can't smell nothing but, the, but your, your ungodliness. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Well, good. We can go home now. Not Harley. Go to Romans chapter 11. <clears throat> He's talking about the Jew here that did everything right, that sought righteousness and didn't attain, and people that did not seek righteousness got it. That don't seem fair, does it? Get a bunch of people that are seeking righteousness and never attain, but people that don't seek it, get it? That don't, that don't make sense, does it? Verse 11 of chapter 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Talking about the Jew. God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come to the Gentiles. That's us. For to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of the Jew be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of the Jew be the riches of the Gentiles, how much more then is going to be their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles. He's speaking to us, those of us that were non-Jew, that, that did not have a covenant with God. Inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, Paul was a Jew, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of the Jew, them, the Jew, be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? 
And for that reason right there, verse 15, Brother Pruitt, you can judge this for me, sir. I believe the 15th chapter of Romans is a little signature, a, 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 a mystery revealed that the Jew has got to come in before the resurrection of the Lord Jesus comes back. I believe that's what he's saying to us right there. The receiving of them is life from the dead. And if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if, what, if some of the branches be broken off and you being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them and with them partake of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if you boast, you're not bearing the root. The root's bearing you. You'll say then, well, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. But you're standing by faith. Don't be high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest He also spare not you. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward you goodness. If you continue in His goodness, otherwise you'll be cut off. That don't sound like once saved, always saved me, does it to you? Sounds to me like you could get cut off just like the Jew did. In other words, he's saying, stay in faith. Don't go back to works. It didn't work for them. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in again, for God's able to graft them in again. And if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Till they can get the rest of the family in. Till they can get the rest of us in. Till they can get the rest of us in. He wasn't willing to let anybody go. That's okay, we've got to cut them off and so I can reach to them in faith. And once they're reached in faith, then they'll be the example for the ones that were originally in because it's going to be by faith and not by works is going to get us in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. What did they repent of? Well, didn't I ask you to ask me that? Repented of what? How can you return ungodliness from Jacob? How do you get them to... What do they need to repent of? This is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. <laughs> you can't take away your sins. Have you noticed? He can take them from you though. It's concerning the gospel. They are enemies for your sakes. But it's to concern touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as you in time past have not believed God, yet now have obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. For God has concluded them all in unbelief. That's me, you, the Gentile, the Jew, all of us. That He might have mercy on all of them. So ultimately, what is going to get the Jew and the Gentile saved? It's going to be His mercy that does it. Amen. Then Paul went off into this complete dance session. When he said, oh, the depth of the riches of both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who's been his counselor? Who has first given him and it shall not be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. Let me define these things to you and we'll close. It's five minutes to twelve. You're getting ready to go. Ungodliness. Let's define that. It's man's feeble attempt to reach God in his own strength. And that's what the Jew needed to repent of. Trying to reach God on their own. Godliness is man's faith in God's covenant to redeem him. Here I am, Lord Jesus. Come get me. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus! That's it. I'm saved. You are too. 
Aren't you saved? Aren't you? I thought you were. Are you saved? Huh? You can't say you are. You want to be? Come here. Let me talk to you. Come here real quick. Come here. Come here. Oh, hey. Yeah, I came reluctantly too, but you know what? He, I was minding my own business when he come got me. <laughs> the scripture says this. I like you. You know, I liked you at the funeral. You did? Yeah. You made me cry a lot. Did I make you cry a lot? Yeah. You're making me cry right now. <laughs> yeah. The Bible says this. Everybody sinned. Me, you, Billy Graham, Charles Manson, all of us. People say I look like Charles Manson. Yeah, you probably do. Yeah, just, just don't act like him, right? Who say he looks like Charles Manson? No, no, he's beautiful. You too pretty look like Charles Manson. Everybody has sinned, all of us. And the Bible says that the wages of sin, the price of that sin is death. But the good news is the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And whoever calls on his name will be saved. You want to know how you'd be saved? Call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Just call on him with me. Say this with me. Say, God in heaven. I believe with all my heart. Jesus has been raised from the dead. I confess him as Lord over my life. Right now. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus. I receive you. You said if I call on your name, I'll be saved. I must be saved. I called on your name. It's good for me. Now tell church on the word where Jesus is. Wait a minute. I forgot to say. Where is he? He's right here. Man. Oh, that's what I was waiting on, right? <laughs> Y'all welcome the man to the kingdom. <laughs> you still saved, ain't you? Jesus is still in your heart, ain't he? Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> See, you, why did we have to think we got to know everything before we can get saved? That's right. He didn't need to tell, I don't know. I don't even remember what I said. See, but well, where's Jesus? He's right here. See, <laughs> that's all I need to know. What? It's, if it gets any more complicated than I once was blind, but now I see. That's good enough, ain't it? That's right. That's right. Well, we're going to close up right here, but let me stay, share this part with you. That's pretty cool, son. Let's get him a Bible. Do we, don't we have a Bible back there? Ed, if you'll check that shelf back there, let's get him a Bible. Um, people have done everything I know to try to get better with God than, than what they were. And I know an old boy that, you know, sin, hell, sex, and hate, lives with his girlfriend, drinks, cusses, smokes, hell, raises, I mean, my God, but he don't eat bacon. <laughs> no, sir. I said, so why don't you eat bacon? No, I just don't, you know, the Bible says you're not supposed to eat bacon. <laughs> That's a true story. So I'm a closet bacon eater around him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I asked him one time, I said, uh, why do you not eat bacon? Is, is it because it's for your health? Well, I mean, I just know you do better. I said, but you think you're a better person because you don't eat bacon. Well, I feel like I'm closer to God. I said, see there? You're gonna come. You're gonna come before. You're gonna come before the, the, the throne one day. You'll come before the pearly gates, and he's gonna say, uh, Peter, "Saint Peter, say, sin, hell, sex, hate, all sorts of all sort of carousing, but you didn't eat pork. Come on in. <laughs> See, righteousness is based on what you eat. No, that's right. No, you call on the name of Jesus. That's right. That's what's gonna do it. And he'll start addressing your behavior, and he might even tell you don't eat bacon. But until he tells me that. <laughs> Me and Oscar Meyer are buddies. <laughs> and then I know these folks that called me one day and said, we're going to Israel. I said, great, I'd love to go to Israel sometime. And he sent me pictures of him getting baptized in the Jordan River. And he talked about it like he got baptized in magic waters. And I thought, does he think he's better now because he went to the Jordan and got baptized? You know, water is just as wet in Lithia Springs as it is in Jordan. And then he went and, and mudded himself down in the Dead Sea mud like he was specially anointed. <laughs> you believe 
And I said, supernatural special anointing out of the Dead Sea? You're still going to have to get some, you know, some uh, bleach water that, that they, they pipe in through the county and wash all the junk off of you. <laughs> See what I'm saying? People are looking for ways to be special, to do something extra. Honey, just relax and be a Christian. Thank you for joining us today for the Wordwise Christian Broadcast here at Church on the Word. Remember, God sent us His written word to get our noggin straightened out. When his mindset becomes our own peace, as always, the result, our belief gets straightened out. Our confession gets straightened out. Our life gets straightened out because we have become word-wise. word-wise. God bless you. See you next week. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'll never forget that wallpaper. One of the last wallpaper jobs I did in the 90s. White-haired gentleman, late 80s. Moved around pretty good, talked real good, told me what he needed me to do. Lived over here in Brookhaven. I was getting the job done. Nice, expensive flock, got it on the wall. Man, made of money. And uh, he says, now, before you go, I've got a gift for you. I said, okay, thank you. So I got everything done, got ready to go, and got all packed up, ready to go, and had the paper done. And he wrote me a check for it and thanked me for what I did. And he says, now, I have this gift for you. I said, okay. He handed me a book. Hold on. It was like this. And he presented it to me like this. Just like that. And I took it. It said, The Book of Mormon. Oh. Another Testament of Jesus Christ. He said, This will lead you in places for your life. I said, Thank you, sir. I'd already thought of where I was going to deposit it when I got out. I said, Thank you, sir. And then I would have expected him to say anything other than what he said. I thought he would have said to me, when I started reading this, my life straightened out. There was instruction in this that straightened out my life when I was a child. He didn't say any of that. He handed it to me. I took it. I had it out of his hands into mine, and we made eye contact. And he said to me, I hadn't had a cup of coffee in 45 years. (laughs) That's what he said. You should have seen, you should have seen, I should have seen my face. I went, it's, it's good. I was thinking where the nearest McDonald's was because that's where I was going to stop on my way. In my mind, I could see where that McDonald's was. I was going to get a cup of coffee on the way out. And I went and got one in honor of the faith that I had, being yet uncircumcised, right. that I might be the father of all them which believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness and I might be imputed unto them also. I wanted to say to the old man, you think God's going to line us all up and say, all oh, you coffee drinkers, go to hell. Rest of you come in. You see where faith is? Coffee drinker. Thank you, sir. Well, I'm sure to. Ooh, I got some gifts for you, brother. Help a brother out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what you need. Good. I love y'all. Stay in faith. Stay in faith. Stay in faith. Trust the blood. Trust your faith. Jesus, listen. You've heard me say it over and over. I'm gonna say it again. Bob Gass said one time. He said. I fed 30,000 children in, what city was it? In Romania. He said, I've written a daily devotional every day of my life for 50 years. He said, when I go before the pearly gate and St. Peter asks me, why should I allow you into my heaven? He was an Irish preacher. He said, I'm not going to say to him in that day, I fed 30,000 orphans in Romania. I'm not going to say to him, I wrote a daily devotional for over 50 years. No, he said, I'm going to pull out my spiritual master card and slide it across the table and say, St. Peter, charge it to the master. (laughs) (laughs) Grab that microphone and pray or I'll just keep preaching and saying the same old stories over and over again, over and over, over and over. What does that got to do with prosperity? Oh, yeah, what's it got to do with prosperity? Let me finish. (laughs) Sermon number two. If... Condemnation speaks to you, it's because you're under works and law and you cannot hear prosperity. You're deafened to it just like we were in church. But when condemnation drops, 
you'll hear the Holy Ghost has been talking to you about prosperity yes. from the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And your steps will take you down pathways of prosperity like you've never prospered in your life. Is it not true, J.P. Salmon? Have you not prospered since you have had an understanding and revelation of righteousness by faith? Am I putting words in your mouth? Took him to 2012 to figure it out. Took him to 2012 to figure it out. Well, good. Uh, you and Jay both get up there and y'all talk about it and pray us out here. Both of you, go. Oh, what about that video? Do you have a video yet? This is me feeding a flock. When you got something to feed, there's always somebody hungry going to show up. Yeah, y'all going to come up here together. Watch this. Check this out. I forgot about the video. It was funny. God love them. They're always somebody hungry around you. I've never had a church service in that people didn't walk in ravenously hungry. Yes. Wasn't you hungry, baby, was, when you got here? You, you better? I am, you fed I better? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> He's working on it. Please be patient as we work on our technical difficulties. <laughs> okay, here it is. <clears throat> Catch it in midair. I've always got a congregation to feed. <laughs> there was one that would squawk. <laughs> I'd try to run all the other ones off, and there was one that'd walk right up and eat it right out of my hand. I gave him that video. Oh. One would come right up and just eat right out of my hand. I thought the one that, that, that had confidence got fed. The one that had no confidence and screamed at everybody didn't get nothing. That's a lesson learned. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he's still God, isn't he? Yes, he is. And he's still on the throne, isn't he? Yes. he he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, isn't he? Yes. He is still the God of healing. He is still the God of freedom. He's still the God of prosperity. He's still the God of, of, of breaking chains. I mean, it, it's time, y'all. It's here. It's available for you. He, it, healing can take place in your body right now. Freedom from addiction is taking place right now. He's still the same. He's still God. He's still, prosperity in your finances can take place right now. It's not, it's not enough just to know it. You've got to know it so you can apply it. It's time to stand on it. I can believe all day that this chair will hold me up, but until I stand on it, I'll never know what it can do. Stand on what you know is true because then you can possess it. A book on its shelf is fine, but you won't know what's in the book until you possess it. Pick it up, read it, possess what's yours. Take what's yours. Freedom's here. Freedom from addiction. Freedom from, from, from bondage. Freedom from uh, uh, poverty. It's all here. Take it. It's yours. Don't wait on it. Take it now. Take it now. Take it. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. I have nothing to add to that. Let's lift our hands. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this service. We thank you for your scripture. We thank you that we walk in faith, that we walk, that everything we do, we do it because of what you've done for us on the cross. That it's not our works, it's not what our hands do, but it's what you've done for us. And it's through that understanding through the understanding that we understand that no matter what we do, we can't help but win because of how you've blessed us. No matter what we do, we can't help but prosper because of how you've blessed us. It's all because of you, sir. So we thank you for that. We honor you. We give you all the glory for it. We thank you for this service, and we thank you for next week. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be dismissed.